There is the issue of uh, affidavit support when you go to the interview of the diversity visa lottery. I want to put in something very, very clear. If you go to the list of official documents required for the DV lottery winners, and this list is provided by the U.S. Department of State, there is no mention or requirement of the affidavit of support. And in this context, we are referring to the form number I-134. Not all embassies are requiring this particular document. Some of the embassies and the consulates are requiring this document. Some are not requiring this documentation. So, who is supposed to fill this form if the U.S. Embassy in the country where you are taking the interview, who is supposed to fill this form? Not everybody has the status or is allowed to fill this form. Only the person with green card or a person who is a U.S. citizen is required to fill this form if this form is required. And again, this form is not a sponsorship form. It is a form which the U.S. government believes that if you get the financial difficulties, instead of going to the U.S. government to request for financial support, the person who is filling this form will be required, will be responsible for supporting you during that financial hardship. So they prefer or they require a green card holder or a US, U.S. citizen to fill this form. Then, not everybody again, even if you're a U.S. citizen or green card holder, will be able to fill this form. They needed to know how much is your annual income. And that annual income is related to the poverty guidelines of the poverty line. So if a person who is going to fill that form is single, he needs to have maybe 18,000 per year. And then if he's going to sponsor or to put one person or two people, total will be three, they say maybe you only need to have 35,000. So there is a poverty guideline to determine how many people and how much income you need to have. It's not about the bank statement. It is about the annual income. And the annual income is going to be proven by tax return or tax credit, I mean the tax uh, transcript, which will be able to include to, 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 to say this is the annual income of someone according to the IRS. So that is how it's supposed to be. What is the challenge of getting this one? People are assuming if you are hosting me, you have to fill this form. No. You can have a person A as a host and the person B can be the person filling the affidavit of support if, again, the embassy in your country is requiring the affidavit of support. The host is any person giving you the address or the place to stay. A host can be international student. A host can be a person visiting America. A host can be any person with an immigrant visa. But the person filling the DS, the filling the uh, affidavit of support must be a green card holder or a U.S. citizen with a certain income as a minimum requirement. So, if you go to a person to ask that one, the challenge usually is rising based on the following things to get someone to fill that form. Number one, not everyone who is in America will have the income which will meet the poverty guidelines if is adding you in that particular list. The person can be above the poverty line based on their income. But if, let's say, you come you and your spouse and two children, that is four people on top of their salary or the top of their income, that will be difficult to find the people who will be able to do that. Number two is the fact that the tax return or the tax credit has the social security number. So why should I give you the document which has social security of myself, my wife, and the three children. How, I don't want to know what will be using those doc, those information. I can send you a, no. 
So that is a challenge. Some people, they don't like to share either how much they make or sometimes the exact social security number in that particular context. Some of the embassies, they know that because of that reason, they allow you, the person who is sending that one, to send it direct to the embassy. So if the country where you are, the embassy requires that, you can ask the embassy if they can give you the particular email so that the person can send that information direct to the embassy. Someone will be confident to send that information direct to the embassy than to you because I do not know how you are going to handle social security number, whether it's going to be compromised or not. So that is a challenge in that particular case. But the best way to avoid this confusion, for instance, the embassy in Nairobi, Kenya, requires affidavit support. The embassy in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, doesn't require. So if you have difficulties completely, you cannot get the affidavit support, then move the interview location from Kenya doing Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, then you don't you are not required to provide the affidavit support and that will be the quick solution for that. But all in all, the affidavit support is not required. But if the particular embassy requires it, you must go with it. If you don't go with that particular affidavit support, they are not going to deny you the visa. They will give you the time, maybe you have four weeks or five weeks or six weeks, go and bring this documentation so that you can give you the visa or they are not going to give you the visa if you completely fail to bring that document in the countries where the affidavit support is a required documentation.